This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, Glenn Martinez of Olamana Gardens. And normally I would say Glenn Martinez on this side of the camera and Natalie on the other side of the camera. But today we have Natalie on this side. Yeah. So up front and personal, <laughs> this is her. She's doing it, huh? Yeah. So normally Natalie films me a lot of YouTubes and things like that and a lot of instructional stuff for University of Hawaii. We work with them, Dr. Benny Ron, uh, making films about organic farming and you know, worm composting, all that kind of stuff. And Natalie's always on the camera. So she is, and then she does all the editing and all the other work. So today, though, she gets to be up front and the other guys get to hide behind the camera. That's so we're right. good fun. So what are we announcing today, Natalie? Okay, well, today is announcement for our Open Farm Day, which is on October 29th of this month. So this coming Sunday, we'll have Open Farm Day starting at 11 o'clock. Um, it goes till we then. Uh, closing whenever. The last man yeah. standing. But our there tours for the farm day is 11, 1, and 3. Yeah. yeah. And so we ask people bring a dish, bring a drink, share, yeah. comment, beer, see what wine, we're doing, soda, tour. whatever you're going to drink, you bring it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So That'd it's good fun. fun. We do it on the on the, the months that have a fifth Sunday. And my, my joke is that on the 5th, uh, Sunday, you bring a 5th and come on out. But mostly people bring a bottle of wine or beer and bring the kids. It's a great family day. It's a day in the country. It's a freebie. Olamana Gardens Club is a nonprofit. And we do this as to just show it uh, what permaculture is about, what organic farming is about, uh, and how you can live sustainably, and that it is doable on a very low-key basis. So we really kind of encourage that. And uh, so what are you going to show them on the tour? Yeah, so we have a um, video of Glenn doing a tour around the farm, yeah. and it will consist of seeing the whole farm, you know, yeah. permaculture, yeah. aquaponics, fish in a pond, fish in the tanks. That's right. Water recirculating around. You got horses, bed, goats, horses. chickens, the whole thing. So we'd like to play this little video clip of you. It's a little fast tour around the farm. Just give you a hint of what it is. But it's a very relaxing, it's a very picnic kind of mode to it. And that. So people come and go throughout the day. So people will start coming at 11 and they'll kind of do a two or three hour rotation. So we'll have different people throughout the day. And so the flavor changes. And so she, she says she'll do the tours at 11, 1, and 3 o'clock clock yes. and uh, good fun. But anyway, watch this video and it'll give you a hint of what you're going to be able to see at the farm. Hi, my name is Glenn Martinez and uh, this is Olamata Gardens. We want to give you a tour around here and show you what we're all about. You'll be pulling up worms, handful of worms like this. They're soft, almost call them cuddly, but they're eating my garbage. This is the nourishing water that makes this garden grow. This is fish water. But I smell it, doesn't smell fishy, looks clear, looks drinkable. We all look at top of the plant, we say, wow, that's good looking. But to a farmer, he likes to dig his hand up and pull up the plant. It's just a piece of foam, an inch and a half to two inches thick, and look at those roots go down. This is what we normally use inside of a beehive. We have to slip it in, and the bees will come up, and they'll make their own cone, they'll put their eggs in there, they'll hatch their bees out. We have 17, 18 families eating out of our garden every week and a very small parcel of land and a very small investment. My limbs have become more mature and I'm getting mature fruit on every limb of this tree. So you got the chickens living in a symbiotic relationship and they're able to go through here and they can eat all these worms. We're only the third people in the United States to be certified again doing what we do. Well, that give you a little sneak preview of it. Olamata Gardens is a five acre certified organic farm. And that, um, so we do an aquaponics. That's what I love doing. I love doing the air lifts. Uh, we do a lot of composting because we have three Arabian horses. We have about 200 chickens and ducks. We got a couple of goats on there. 
We have one pig, but the pig's in the freezer, so we'll just skip that one. But uh, we do one pig a year, and that's it. And uh, But we're already past the harvest. We have honeybees, as you saw in the film there. But a lot of it is just to show that you can do, you can pick a part of that. You might not be able to have a horse in your backyard, but you can do the aquaponics and that. You can have the rabbits and that sort of thing. And uh, it was really neat that uh, we were able to go out today to the North Shore and visit a farm out there. And he's buying his worm, cause, worm uh, compost from a fellow that raises rabbits up in uh, Monowilly. And uh, that, Bacacilo. Oh, Bacacilo, in Bacacilo, Bacacilo, I'm sorry. And what's his name of his farm? Zach. Zach's rabbits. Yeah. So what's blue he do? He raises yeah, blue worms. He raises the worms underneath the rabbit cages, yeah. and his neighbors have no complaints, no odors, no flies, etc. So it really helps out a lot of people who have got problems with odors and flies, and they want to have a couple of animals in their backyard or residential neighborhood. You put the worms underneath, knocks it down, That's right? That's true. Yep. That is so true. We had some people at the farm yesterday that came and toured, and we took them through, and uh, the horses, and they couldn't believe. No odors, yeah. no flies. But the oddest thing, they say, you must clean up constantly. I say once every four months, right? Yeah. That's it. That's about that. Yeah. And, so, uh, mm -hmm. um, can I just mention the biggest and greatest thing about um, updating Olamana Gardens is Glenn with his air lift pumps. Yeah. We have a demonstration area where Glenn has aquarium set it's up. It's almost a little science fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that he yeah. has set up and he'll have it operational and he'll yeah. talk about all the different things that he does moving that water right. with using yeah. an air pump. Yeah. In fact, is that area. It's about 20 by 30 feet. You got half of it's under uh, shade cloth in that. But Murray Hallam, who's a grand poopa of aquaponics oh, yeah. in Australia, came to visit a couple of months ago. Yeah. And he was only going to be with me for two days. Yeah. So he built this science fair project kind of area, two 55-gallon drums, right? I mean, two 55-gallon aquariums, right? Yes. And so I had to rapid fire show him about 14 different inventions that I've done, aeration, how to pump water, how to siphon water. Yeah. So we, after he left, we decided, you know what, we'll just keep this little area. Mm -hmm. So like on Sunday, we'll fill it all full of water, mm -hmm. we'll turn it on and show you. Mm -hmm. And one of the newest things is the circular garden. Yes. And this came into being that most aquaponic guys, like we went out to the North Shore today, they build their grow beds four feet wide, mm -hmm. 50 to 100 feet long. They put white or blue foam on it. They drill holes and you put the plants. They cannot have plants underneath, but, I mean, uh, the uh, fish, fish underneath, because the fish would eat the plant's roots. So that's a no-no, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't do that. What we came up with, and we have one unit here in uh, Waimanalo, we did a nine-foot diameter tank. We did it uh, six-foot high sides, eight-sided, coming up. 1,200 lettuce plants on it, and it revolves in the sun, so you get even lighting. And so we have a model of that at the yeah, farm. So you'll be able mini. to see that. <laughs> uh, we did one four foot by four foot. We have it with a 55 gallon drum, and it flushes. Every seven minutes, it flushes, and the garden turns for yeah. three and a half minutes, so all the plants get even light. Yeah. But the short thing is, why do we do aquaponics? That's a big question, right? Yep. Well, for us, we have a mountain stream running through the middle of our property. And the problem is that the rats and the pigs up in the woods contaminate the stream. It's not potable water. You would have to filter it or boil it. So I cannot use that water to grow uh, organic crops and then sell it to the public. So what happened is we went into aquaponics. We use city water, yeah. you know, so it's clean. And then we use the same water. We're, what, nine years now we're into it? Nine years with the same water going in a circle. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say the same water, keep in mind, we add 50 gallons a day because mm -hmm. the plants are always drinking. And right? the best of water. The best of water, yeah. right. And that, so it's going around constantly. But when I do aquaponics, before when I irrigated from the stream, I used 20,000 gallons a day to irrigate our crops. Mm -hmm. Now we use 50 gallons a day. Surprising, when you have to pay for it, it changes your whole attitude toward this thing, right? Yeah. But by doing 50 gallons a day, and keep in mind that agricultural water is only $3 for 1,000 gallons. So my water bill is only like $7 a month for the agricultural section, which is kind of amazing. So around the world, aquaponic people, they can grow uh, th two to three times more food in the same space and you only use five or ten percent of the water because you're recirculating it. So it works out pretty great. So what do you grow in your aquaponics? 
Yeah, there, you know, for the aquaponics, there is yeah. more superfoods. Yeah, super what, what's food a superfood? Things. A superfood thing is more nutritional value. The Gershon diet? Yeah, kind of thing. Gershon Everything except for the apples, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, we don't do any apple trees. Carol, we don't, we do we're not ginger, cool enough. Ginger. do turmeric, pineapples, right. Right. chard. Chili pepper. Anybody wants chili pepper? Now is the time to come because oh, we, we have a lot of chili pepper. Anybody on comes that Sunday, <laughs> yes, they can help themselves to the chili Chiyote pepper. We, we are doing wild on the chili pepper. Yeah, Chiyote And every now and then we have somebody from Texas bite one and say, We eat these for breakfast. Mm. And normally they have to excuse themselves because they're, they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so. yes. Or Hawaiian chili peppers are something to be reckoned with, aren't they? They are. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. How about and compost then, tea? Yes, and that, yeah. that's another thing, too, is that is helping all the plants that we have mm -hmm. everywhere is on the property, right. is the compost tea, and Glenn has um, a setup mm -hmm. that will get yeah. up and running to show you yeah. folks what we do with the compost tea, right. how we brew it, yeah. how we release it, aerate it. Yeah. And you drink the compost tea? Um, no. Uh, Your plants no. drink it, right. <laughs> no. yeah. So the compost tea is basically do two handfuls of worm casting or compost. You throw it in this five-gallon bucket, and we have the devices there. Nice sit in for patents for all of this, but it turns out the patents, when you get one in America, it's only good in America. It's not good anywhere else. So it turns out Natalie and I were going to the Philippines and we we're helping out with orphanages and deaf schools and we we're going to South Korea, we went to China, I went to Hong Kong, and you go all these other places, went all the way to Jamaica last year and that, we went to San Juan, Puerto Rico uh, last year, and you go to these places, our patents are not good or basically overseas. Nice. So we ended up just giving them away. I gave up my uh, patent rights on about 14 different patents and we decided, you know what, the world's hungry, it needs it. Um, we're not going to open a factory in that. So we're going to come up to the break and we're going to talk about the benefits of the worm castings, okay? Stay with us. We'll this is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king, come banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you can talk to God, go banging on his door. Hi, we're back here at uh, Think Tech Hawaii. We Hi. really welcome you aboard. By the way, I want to put in a reminder. This one is live. If you're watching right now, well, that's pretty obvious. But keep in mind that a couple of hours from now, say 7 o'clock or so in the evening, they're going to post this up on YouTube. So you can tell your friends about it. They can go back and they can take a look at it. In fact, sometimes I suspect that more of my friends and my audience goes back and watches the YouTube or on their website at Think Tech Hawaii and see it, then catch it because sometimes we're on at two o'clock in the afternoon and my friends are working in yeah. that. But the compost tea, we went yeah. up to the North Shore today, right? Yes, we did. To a, to a medical marijuana grower, yes. right? Won't yes. tell you who, won't tell you where. No. But pretty righteous stuff, all legal, all tagged, everything else in yeah. that. And so we went out there and we delivered a compost tea maker, which mm -hmm. was a 55 gallon drum with a five gallon bucket on the top. And what I invented was a way of bubbling the water up it goes up, it saturates the compost, whatever you put in the sack, saturates it totally, and then it back blushes every four minutes. So it goes up and down every four minutes, right? No moving What's the parts. benefit of it? The benefits for it is nutritional for the plants. Right. You're what not you buying any chemicals. Of, that's right. right. That's the biggest benefit. Right, right. No chemicals. And on our farm, I tell people that I had a choice between buying chemicals and buying beer. And <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> obviously for the beer. Yeah. But we because we have to be so careful when you're an organic farmer, you can't just be throwing anything. Plus yes. that you could burn your plant. Can you burn a plant with compost? No. Tea? No, no, you just inoculate it, no. and then it just goes more wild, yep, more. Yep, yep. And folks, I got to tell you, when I started shampooing with it, great stuff. Before I had almost nothing, and now it's just looking better and better. <laughs> I'm, I'm just so proud of it. You know, it's great stuff. You know, you can't go wrong. Yeah, but the with the worm castings is is so therapeutic yeah. for the, the 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 plants that we do. So we not only use it in our aquaponic system, but we pump it out and play on all the other plants on the farm, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Put it in a backpack sprayer, walk around, spray everything. Yeah. Dog walks by, spray the dog. <laughs> Grandchildren walk by, spray them. It's good yes. on everything. And once it gets yep. inoculated, it'll That's just right. continue to right. grow. And so like we went down to Ono Farms down on Maui. They're a yeah. certified organic farm. They have about 20 acres of orchids or orchards in that, you know, everything from bananas to oranges to mangoes, the whole thing. And they found out very much like we did, we sprayed worm tea every Friday on all of our plants, mm -hmm. and on the second Friday, the next Friday, we did EM, Effective Microorganism. That's a commercial product you can pick up at any feed store. Mm -hmm. And that, and we would spray kind of one, if the left one don't get them, the right one will, yes, then right? It does. We did it for about two years, and then mm -hmm. we got caught up in something. Somehow we missed our little routine, and it didn't face it. Nope. Now, maybe every six months, I'll go out and hit it with it. If I ever have any odors in the horse pen area or around the animal, we simply go over it, we spray the pile of horse manure, and people are amazed. My pile of horse manure is maybe 20 feet deep and 60 feet long. There's no flies and no odor. You can go over, dig your hand, pick it up and smell it, and it's sweet as can be. Mm -hmm. So it's good stuff. Yes, it is. Yeah. So what do you think for the kids to do there on farm day? Yeah, usually what happens is we'll take the um, everybody on a tour and the kids especially and we mm -hmm. have them help us feed the animals so they'll just walk yeah. around and we'll have like yeah. sprouts or and that's another thing too is all the animals get special um, sprouts to eat that's right for their meals so when you go to, we when we go to a Wyman Lalo feed store and we buy grain right we could go home and just scoop it up and feed the grain right, right. but that would be dead food what we do, you'll see on Sunday, we put it in air-conditioned boxes that are four foot wide, 12 foot long. Yeah. The smallest air conditioner made at Home Depot up on top. And then in between, they have layers. And we put the seed in there. Yeah. It's grain, but it's actually a seed, right? Yes. And we sprout it. And it's six days. It's this tall, yeah. green, and lush as can be. And better That's for what we feed our horses. Mm -hmm. So the result is, how do the horses look? Oh, they look fabulous. Their yeah. skin color, I mean, the The whole, color, the, the coating yeah. good. And, and the, how about their feet? Oh, barefooted. They're, all of our horses are barefoot, folks. And there's two reasons for that. One, it's good for the horse. Number two, it's good for my pocketbook. The horseshoe was getting $80 to $100 per horse. I had four horses, okay? I'm down to three right now. But I had four at $80 to $120 each horse every six weeks. So when we improve the diet of the horses yeah. by giving them the live food, their their uh, hooves, which are basically like your 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 fingernails, fingernails and that, yeah. they got so hard and so strong. All my horses run around barefoot. Mm -hmm. You remember when you're a kid, when you ran around barefoot. By the end of summer, you could walk on anything, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, you didn't even want to put shoes on. Yeah. Well, that's the way our horses are, mm -hmm. and that is growing around Hawaii is barefoot horses and that. So it's a growing trend. How about baby animals? Got any baby chickens? Chickens, ducks. Ducks. Yeah, yeah. we do have chickens and ducks. A lot yep. of baby fish yep. in the ponds. Yeah. And um, yeah, we have geese. Yeah. Out there. Right. And then if you're a plant lover, let's say you're not a real animal person, you're a vegetarian, so you're not really into the animals so much. How are we doing on plants? The botanical yep. garden, right? Yes. Yep. Yes. So you have Flowering trails everywhere. all around. We got oh. like 18 kinds of bamboo, 87 different kinds of tea plants. And the gingers, the white and gingers ginger. and the yellow gingers are in yep. full bloom. In full bloom. Yep. And I, some of them are growing out over the path, and I cannot bring myself to cut them off. I mean, I know I should open up the path. <laughs> yeah, I just brush by and my side gets wet because when you brush by them, the smell is so and great. And you smell so good. And everything else. Yeah. Somebody says, should we trim them down? We got people coming Sundays. And I forget it. 
You yeah. know, it's just, it's something about being over the top. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to y'all coming out. Come and go as you want to. It's, yeah. a, it's a nice day. Uh, we make new friends every time, don't we? We sure do. Yep. And the people that come, they really enjoy it. And then eventually, because it's a su sustainability farm, they'll start doing it too. They'll start off with the worms. Mm -hmm. They'll say they'll the want to buy yep. worms and they yep. take the worms home yep. and make them a worm bin and yeah. start recycling their food waste. That's right. And, um, and Ola Monte Gardens is the largest worm farm in Hawaii. We have been for about eight years now. Yeah. Uh, and we have started other people out. Yes. We started uh, LIA, the Mormon College, uh, BYU. Yes. They have, we license them to do the worms mm -hmm. and that. Uh, uh, Zach the Rabbit Man got yeah. him going. So we've started a lot of other people in business in that because there's something wrong about somebody driving all the way from the North Shore back to the winter side to buy worm tea or to buy worm casting. Everybody should be doing their own. That's what we did at the farm today. They have enough land. They can start getting restaurant waste. They mm -hmm. can start doing their own composting. Mm -hmm. So we lose another customer. Yeah, but that's we're why spreading. we're nonprofit, huh? <laughs> huh? That's yeah. how that working out. <laughs> but we're having a good time with it. But uh, it's it's a relaxed day. And the other thing is, remember. Before I wore this hat, last week I wore the ham radio hat. Yes, you did. So we're not only growing, you know, carrots and tomatoes and lettuce, we're growing ham radio antennas. And so if you're into ham radios, I'll have the ham radio shack open. We have everything from Coast Guard radios to VHF radios, UHF radios. And of course, I went to my high school reunion last week, my 50th, and I went to a ham fest down in yes. Melbourne, Florida, and they insisted that I couldn't go home without a new radio. So I have a new Yesu 857D all-in-one. If you only owned one radio, this would be it. And uh, But we have them all hooked up. We have them all running. And we did the Boy Scouts uh, yesterday, right? Um, on Sunday. On Sunday. On Sunday. We did uh, Jota, which is the uh, Boy Scouts Jamboree. Jamboree on the air. On the air. Across the whole nation, Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts get a merit badge by going to a radio ham radio outfit and talking on the radio. Yeah. And so Natalie and I hosted about 30 people out at the mm -hmm. farm, again, all for free, and that this is just a public thing that we do. But the young boys got to come in, and they got to talk on the radio. On the radio so we had radio. people coming in saying, my daddy lives in Japan, can we talk to him? Yeah. My brother lives in Italy, can we talk to him? Yeah. And it was just the thrill of getting on a shortwave radio and being mm -hmm. able to talk to people. And for the boys, really lit up on that. They only gave them a sure courtesy did. tour of the farm just yes. to round it out. I think they like the animals best. You think? Until they got to the ham shack. And it's hard to compete talking. with baby ducks, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> yeah. It is good fun. But so it's a little bit of everything for yes. everybody. And uh, and then wh while you're there, for any of the guys or gals in into machine shops, we have a little machine shop, welding, carpentry shop mm -hmm. there, a makery, if you yes. will. Everybody's been to a bakery. Well, we have a makery, makery. where we make things. That's and uh, right. we've had two Marines come out this year and make AR-15 uh, rifles mm -hmm. legally. Uh, they buy a kit and you make your own gun and yeah. go down and register it and everything else. Uh, so they learn machine shop skills, but we have a full welding outfit and that. You but sure uh, got all the tools I, there. We got all the tools, yes. yeah. Any excuse to buy another tool, that's my theory. That's a good program to be on. But uh, how do they find us? How, where can they get more information? Yeah, so Olamana Gardens www.olamanagardens.com yep. and also www.olamanagardensaquaponics.com will show you a lot of videos about what we are about. Right. And like that little short do? video we showed, she's got about 20 or 30 of them on the Olamana Gardens aquaponics.com. Yeah. But either way, just go up on Google, write Olamana Gardens, hit it, give you a simple map. Very easy to find in Waimanalo. Uh, it's good. Parking's out on the street. Just walk in yes. and that. If you're bringing down food, come down to the bottom, unload, drop it off, and yep. drop it off, and then park on the outside. Mm -hmm. We're good fun. We'll lock up the horses so the kids can walk anywhere without being stepped on. So that'll be pretty good. Yeah. But uh, but you get to feed horses, feed ducks, feed chickens, feed fish. Yeah. Feed yourself. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so pretty much, we the food's out from one o'clock on. Uh, yeah. We we start eating, and it's a food fest. And uh, but we really look forward to y'all coming. I wanted to give you a follow up. Uh, two shows ago, we did the Farmers Union yeah. Convention, and it was anticipated that they would get chartered for their 
national you know, status. Thing, status, and we did it. That and was what, two Sundays ago, we, three Sundays ago. Yeah, three so Sundays. we did our charter, the big the national guys flew out, yes. we did that. And then the next show we did was on the ham radio, mm -hmm. because we had this set, which was yes. the, the test, that was a statewide test, that was last Saturday. It right. went from eight in the morning to noontime, and every emergency outfit, yep. hospital, state, civil defense, every island, did it mm -hmm. all the way through. Mm -hmm. It was so successful. Well, that was what Clem, my guest last week, talked yes. about. It was so successful. They had a big powwow Monday, and the order came down from the governor's office of the powers on high. They're going to do another state one, and every single government agency must have ham radio and VHF in it. And this is a wake-up call because of San Juan, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And we have friends there. 95% of the island still yeah. has nothing. We sent about 50 ham operators over there to help out with getting messages out, mm -hmm. mostly who's okay, what's needed, that kind of stuff. When Natalie and I were in Florida, every day on the news, it was people flying down in small airplanes down to San Juan, Puerto Rico. They were not allowed to come into San Juan, Puerto Rico unless they brought supplies. So they did it. So anyway, great roundup, you know, so we had a good fun. So every weekend's been good fun, and yeah. uh, we're looking for another one this weekend. So anyway, thanks for, uh, Natalie, for being in front of the camera. Huh? <laughs> good fun, huh? Yeah. Hey, it wasn't so bad, was it? And remember, Think Tank, Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to hearing more from you guys. Thank you.